Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria if you're new and today's video is just kind of talking about mental health, especially in this pandemic I was Boris and Denman. I will not even talk about Boris because if I speak I'm in big big trouble. If I speak I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. So I'm not gonna say my piece but obviously they put us in another lockdown. Not once, not twice, three times. This is our third lockdown in the UK. I've had like a really big interest in mental health um, throughout my medical school. I've had two mental health placements um, at psychiatry liaison. So that is when um, psychiatrists um, will go to people that come into hospital, like say with a heart attack. They are also suffering um, with mental health. So you kind of like, you know, figure out what's going on with them. So even though they've come in with a physical problem, um, their mental health has been identified so you kind of just come up with a plan for them if they need it um, and go from there. I've also done a placement at rehab facilities so this is people that have suffered um, from long-term mental health so like schizophrenia or bipolar like serious mental health problems and they're not ready to go into the community yet um, but they are well enough to not be in hospital so it's kind of like a halfway house. I've also done an eating disorder uh, module which was really good. I got to go into um, Beth and Royal to actually see um, the patients suffering from eating disorder. I got to talk to them um, and just get like a real insight and I also have like a whole degree in um, forensic psychiatry, criminal behaviour and law so I do have a bit of background into mental health. Um, so yeah, well, enough about me. So before we get into the video, if you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, road to 1k. The thing like, I kind of want to discuss is how, especially like people my age, like students, university students, we kind of just been left in the lurch. But doing stuff online, like your learning is not going to be the same. And even for me, like I realised that my um, motivation to study <laughs> went downhill. Like, it's just not there. And then it's kind of like, unfair for them to like ask us to perform um how we would if we wasn't in a pandemic like we actually need to understand we're in a pandemic like circumstances are different like i'm lucky now that i now have my own room but before my old house i used to share room with my brother and it's just like stuff like this isn't considered like not everyone's lucky to have their own room and have their own space to study like some people um are sharing with their siblings or the whole house is packed like there's no wet place for them to study and it's like you want us to continue as normal like that is not going to happen and then also financially as well they have not helped university students at or it's like we can't go into university but you want us to still be paying for um accommodation is that making sense? Is that making sense? I'm not even there and you're telling me to pay. Obviously I understand like it is a business like the landlords, they can't just be like gonna give you your money back or you don't have to pay because obviously they have bills to pay like it's a knock-on effect but obviously this is now up to the government to like kind of sort this out because it's unfair like people are either back at home and they're paying for a room that they're not using or they're stuck in a university room on their own and like university in itself pre pre-pandemic can be a lot let alone having to stay in your room like you can't really mix with people you can't talk to people especially if you're new how are you supposed to make friends like i really feel sorry for um first year students like you miss out on freshers and like you're just in a new city a new university like you're starting a new chapter of your life and that's kind of just been taken away from you and i think another thing that's really unfair is the fact that university students are paying 9k or the newest student will be 9,250 great british pounds for online learning like what is that? I can't even lie, university on its own is a bump, okay? And then you're telling me that I have to pay £9,250 for online learning. I am not getting the facilities that I'm paying for. Am I going to the library? No. Am I going to the lecture hall? No. Nothing's happening. I'm staying in my yard, in my yard, but I'm paying over nine bags. Don't be rude don't be cheeky and you know when Boris got asked this guy was waffling and I was just like you're not embarrassed this is really embarrassing you're not embarrassed this is really embarrassing 
something that's not really talked about is people's home environments like not everyone has like a good family or people live on their own or you know there's a lot of factors that people you know don't really take in all of this contributes to your mental health i kind of wanted to discuss what it actually means to be depressed and what to look for i feel like people kind of have an idea like obviously if you're depressed like you're really sad you're really down but um it's not really discussed properly so the free there's three core symptoms um that kind of define depression so the first one is low mood the second one is um loss of interest so this means like say if you enjoyed um watching football you now don't enjoy watching football anymore and the third one is lack of energy or just being really fatigued so those are like the three core symptoms and then you have like another subcategory and these are various things such as like reduced concentration and retention so it could be like you're just watching tv and then like after like 20 minutes you're kind of like i don't even know what i just watched it should also be um getting trouble going to sleep um and then also waking up early um or the other extreme is just sleeping the whole day other symptoms just having reduced self-esteem and um reduced self-confidence so just not really feeling yourself anymore doubting yourself um kind of like you know going into your shell not wanting to really be around anyone another one is reduced appetite so just not really wanting to eat anymore you know not feeling hungry another symptom is having ideas of guilt um, so you're kind of pin it on yourself um, even though it's, it's not your fault at all you think it is your fault um, and you're kind of holding that on your shoulders and it's kind of weighing down on you and other since having suicidal thoughts so just not wanting to be around anymore or wanting to hurt yourself so depression can either be mild moderate or severe and the way it works is that if it's mild you have to have at least two of the first category and then two of the second category that i said um for it to be severe you have to have two of the first category and then three of the second category and for it to be um severe is you have to have all three of the first category and it's have four or more of um the second category I kind of wanted to actually explain because i know people hear about depression but to actually know the exact symptoms to what to look for or if you're someone that knows someone that's depressed um you know kind of looking at the change of energy and how that person is and what to look out for uh, i just kind of thought it'd be helpful it's a really hard time a lot of people kind of put this pressure on lockdown like you know if you don't come out of lockdown without a skill then you've wasted lockdown blah 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 but it's literally like, it's a hard time like there's people dying kim Kim, there's people that are dying there's a lot that is going on like life is not the same things that we enjoyed before we can't do we can't see our friends we can't see our families and yes we are lucky to be in the like the day and age that we have technology and we can still contact people and do facetime skype zoom whatever Seeing someone in person like just a hug or you know a kiss or whatever like you're never going to recreate that um online i know that the mental health is a really big thing and me being on my gp placement i realized that at least 50 percent of the patients that i talked to had some sort of uh, mental health condition alongside their physical health so it just goes to show that mental health is really really big in society and we don't talk about it enough when basically one in two people have some sort of mental health problem like whether they're feeling low or they're actually depressed or um anxiety bipolar schizophrenia like, there's so many stuff that people are going through and like from such young ages like i've talked to patients that are like literally 11 12 13 that are suffering from mental health like it's mental health is is here like we need to talk about it more because a lot of people are suffering from it i know a lot of people's mental health has declined during this lockdown and it kind of is a vicious cycle because 
it's like if you're feeling low you don't have the motivation or energy um to want to work out for example you don't want to work out you can't just sitting around you start eating more and that all kind of goes in a circle that you're going to become more unhealthy you're going to be putting on more weight now you're putting on more weight you feel even worse than yourself and it's just literally a vicious cycle that continues and i've talked to a lot of patients that were like because of lockdown they can't go out to exercise because of underlying condition that means that they don't want to be outside and it's like now they have to stay inside and then you know the cycle continues or people that were healthy before lockdown and now they're going into lockdown and they're just eating and eating because there's nothing else to do like you're literally working you're sleeping you're chilling all in one space like there's no break someone that was healthy before that now has diabetes like if it's stuff like that like it has a really really big effect i feel like once covid is done we're going to see like how much of an effect it really has had on people's mental health and physical health and like all of it is linked it's all linked which is why i really believe that you know more should be spent on um addressing people's mental health needs um working in the gp i realized that it's, it's severely underfunded and not even just in the gp when i worked in the community um mental health team there was literally one psychiatrist one psychiatrist for the whole area like it's literally severely underfunded but yeah people's mental health needs are increasing and especially after this like i know there's going to be an even higher demand but there's just not enough to like kind of reach that demand and it's something that really needs to be worked on like why is it that the waiting time for therapy in the nhs is like months and months and months people kind of misconstrued like mental health like it's not a physical problem like you're not dying but it's a big thing like it really is a big thing like if your mental is not there how are you supposed to like function as a human like if you're feeling down or if you're feeling anxious like that is what it's, you're thinking about in your head like you literally cannot concentrate you literally cannot do anything else so it, it should be treated as important as a physical health another thing with depression is there are a lot of things that you can do before you get put onto medication i think a lot of people have experienced that when they go to their gp they're just like okay here take um some antidepressants and you know not everyone wants to be on medication straight away there are some ways like cognitive behavioral therapies or just talking therapies or, you know just some people just need someone to talk to um which there are stuff that are available when i was at my gp um in my area there was something called uplift um, that people get referred to um, and having talked to a lot of patients they did find it helpful as well also sometimes with some people it's kind of just addressing what their key stressor is in their life and once that gets sorted they start to feel better um, kind of like you know maybe encouraging people to like reach out um, which is easier said than done like I do know that if you're not really a talker or you know if you're in a group of friends and you guys don't really talk about it it's kind of hard to you know bring it up but i promise you that if you do have friends or family like they obviously do love you like it's just something that's not been brought up before but if you bring it up to them they will be more than happy to help they'll be more than happy to listen it's scary to do but you'll feel so much better just kind of opening up and just kind of letting people know you know where you're at a lot of people kind of suffer in silence when you actually don't need to at all like the help is there like i'm sure your su support circle will support you if you don't have that unfortunately like there are other services out there i think another thing that people they talk about is that they've been put on medication antidepressants and their gp doesn't follow up i was lucky enough to be in a gp practice where gps were amazing it was literally like okay like let's check in in like two weeks or three weeks or if you feel like your mental health is declining then feel free to call back like set an appointment um i can see you early on i think having talked to the patients as well like, you really do see that it means a lot and that the gp and the patient has like a really good relationship and i feel like that's so important and something that i really do want to take in once um i am a doctor patients are people like you know they have real emotions There's a lot of doctors out there that like you know this that boom 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 and then 
they've got like what they need to diagnose and they just kind of leave it at that like they're very blunt they don't really let the patient explain exactly what's going on you let the patient talk you get so much information like it's unreal and that's one thing that i realized i'm so privileged to be you know a medical student and student doctor that patients fully trust me and like they're happy to tell me stuff that probably maybe like you know their closest people in their lives don't even know like they're so happy to open up to me you're so lucky to be in this position that you can really help someone and you in order to actually help someone properly you need to know them as a whole and that's why i feel like it's so so important to build that rapport with the patient build a relationship with a patient i hope you guys enjoyed the video i know it's something a bit different but make sure you subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video